Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign, KE0OG. Here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to continue the discussion we had in video 793, which was the most recent one. This is now video 794. And it involves the Alpha ESS AP1000 um, power box. That's this right here. This is the biggest one that I've ever had. And in the last video, we talked about the features. We did the unboxing and so on. This time, we're going to do performance tests. Okay, the first performance test. First of all, we have it connected to an oscilloscope right there. Okay, the oscilloscope says that the voltage is 110 volts and that the frequency is 59. Uh, no, about 60 hertz it jitters a little bit back and forth okay that's the zero load output now let's take a look at this while I turn on this this right here is a heater it has two settings or three f just fan it also has an 800 watt setting now as I turn that on and off we see that there's no change here now if I turn this to high it's 1200 watts and we notice a distinct decrease in the output voltage down to about 101 102 volts okay so let's turn that off and now I have an inductive load this is a professional Milwaukee screw shooter uh, used for doing drywall work and if you, it, it has a variable speed on it and if you just touch it the load is extremely inductive. Now we look on here as we do this, whoops. Okay, we can see some transients uh, in there, but this is the best of all of the tests that I have done on all the power units in terms of waveform integrity in the presence of an inductive load. This does beautifully. Now the big question for ham radio operators is this. I have this tuned to a place on 40 meters, I'm sorry, 20 meters, where there's no signal. Okay, and now I'm gonna listen and I'm going to try these loads. Okay. What we see from it in there, and you could see it on the scope over here, is that there is a little bit of an increase in background noise during the period of time that we were using the inductive load. Okay, so that's something to be aware of. Let's try that same thing, but with uh, just a resistive load here. Okay, way down here, Whoops. S meter is uh, okay. On the purely um, resistive load, it was much better. Uh, nothing out in the way of noise. I think what we might have been hearing was the noise from this right here. A little bit of noise directly from this because this does have uh, something that, ha that arcs a little bit uh, in there. So um, the bottom line, what do I say about this power box? Well, there's one other function we tested and that's up here where you can just lay your phone and it will charge it and that little light should come on. We tried um, my phone and my assistant's phone and neither one of them 
triggered uh, the device. So I don't know what to say about that other than that doesn't seem to be working on this particular unit. Note that we also have 12 volts out plus we have the ability here to plug in a cigarette lighter plug, okay, um, if you want to, or these are your standard uh, uh, barrel connector type things. And over here we have several things for recharging your devices. And I'm just going to pull this out and this out so we can turn this around. There's a uh, one, two, three, okay. It's a, just a light that you can use in a room if you need some light for whatever. It, it'll probably stay on all night with the, this thing. Now, one interesting thing we noted on this, before I went on my trip to Nevada uh, about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, I charged this thing fully. When uh, we just put it out for this video right here, it was only 60% full. So, and there were no, no loads on it at all. Uh, seems a little bit odd, but we were able to uh, use this for uh, all of our tests today uh, with what it had gone down to. And uh, the first thing I will do right now is, is completely recharge it and maybe do a longer term test on the ability of the unit to hold its charge because with the lithium ion battery in there this thing should hold full charge no load for weeks uh, quite a bit of time this is by far the biggest one i've had this is a thousand watts output it runs the 800 watt heater without a problem you try and put a 1200 watt load on it and it does its best but the voltage goes down by 10 percent uh, and it doesn't show a full thousand watts over here. So you notice if I um, if I turn this to 800 watts, it shows the actual output power here. So you can check. This will also show input watts. Okay, and there's some adapter cables where you can use a solar panel if you want to charge this. It will charge at different rates. So we don't need 800 watts of heat in this room, so we'll turn that off. So bottom line, is it a nice thing? Yes, um, on those power boxes I have tested that have uh, phone chargers, they've all been anomalous. I've never had good luck with that where it just clearly, solidly charges the phone all the way up. Um, so this is not unusual in that case. Maybe they're they're using a different kind of phone or something for testing. So um, would I say it's worth it? Well, I went out to uh, Nevada uh, with a smaller unit. It was made by a different company, Bluetti, and uh, used that for uh, two weeks to charge my devices. And um, there was one period of time uh, where I, quote, boondocked, I just went into a parking area in Wendover with this very large parking area for overnight parking. And I parked there and I actually used the, the AC out of the device to power my CPAP machine, which it did beautifully all night long, which was very nice. So last time I tried to use the RV batteries and RV inverter to power my CPAP machine, it ran out of power. Uh, before dawn, so <laughs> I was very grateful for that power box. They're absolutely incredibly useful to have somewhere where you have something that needs to be charged or needs to be run or whatever. Uh, if you use, um, it's about 1.2 kilowatt hours. Let's look at the, the bottom of the thing. Because this has got the uh, specs on it right here. We've got lithium ion capacity with a little over a kilowatt hour uh, in stored in here. Okay, so these are 3.6 volt batteries in appropriate configurations to run this whole thing. 
but the actual capacity is a little over a kilowatt hour. The DC input 12 to 24 volts. Okay, the AC output 110 to 60 hertz. Okay, 2000 watts peak, but we saw what happened when we went to 1200 continuous of the power or the voltage came down. DC output 12 volts to 10 amps. That'd be very nice for QRP radio. Okay, USB uh, A, B, and C, and it's got that fancy USB C that does all the different voltages and everything. Uh, the recharging temperature above freezing, operating temperature, um, it would it can go down uh, below freezing. So, pretty neat little power station. It's a keeper, definitely a keeper. Full disclosure, the company sent me this for review. Um, and I, I'm going to keep it, and I think I'll put this in the RV in place of that smaller Blue Eddy. So, there you have it. It works well. I would like to pay particular homage to my most recent patron on Patreon.com, Doug Owens. Uh, he's KG6NBN, and he recently joined uh, Patreon to support this channel. You can, too, by going to www.patreon.com slash KE0OG. And it's very easy to sign up. You can either do like a monthly uh, support or annual, uh, whichever way uh, is better for you. So until we next meet, 73.